Hey, so what's up, guys? What's happening? Oh, not much. My well, roof. Hopefully, we're gonna have a, a few uh, or a couple Chicago bands in the in the house today. Soil Chicago Knights. Chicago Knights. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff at the wall and hoping something sticks at this point. <laughs> if you're in Chicago, please email us on how to uh, pronounce uh, people living in Chicago. That would be great. <laughs> we got That's, New uh, Yorkers. We got Floridians. We got Texans. Floridians. What are y'all? <laughs> Well, when you're saying all those other things, those were all states, and Chicago's a city, so... Well, oh, that's it's, true. It's Chicago, but, though. But then it would be the Illini, because that's what they're... <laughs> Wouldn't that just be Illuminati at that point? Oh, my God. Close enough. <laughs> I've cracked the code. <laughs> they're all in Chicago. <laughs> Oh yeah. So oh, should have Lord. soil on here tonight and a band called Definitely Maybe. So really excited about that. Uh Soil uh was gonna be on last week with us with the um the mm. underground that uh had to reschedule it and they're gonna be on tour together. So hopefully kind of cool. Yeah, hopefully we can get a get a little more out of them and uh what happened on my screen? Anyway. Talking to two people, the same tour is going to be a first yeah. and pretty cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could talk to Flaw, too. Flaw's, like, really killer. Send emails. Yeah, I know, I know. I wanna I've just been so crazier. What's that, John? I want to make mention of uh, Bruce Dickinson's new album. Okay. Uh, I listened to a little bit of it last night and I was blown away. I was just like, this is amazing. This is incredible. Like, how old is Bruce Dickinson? And he's <laughs> slamming. I'm like, That's what on. I was about to say. I was like, how is he still throwing it down like that? <laughs> uh, so definitely, if you haven't heard it, go out there, do, do some listening and report back to us what you think. Tell me if I'm crazy. <laughs> I oh, yeah. Speaking of, it's crazy how someone thrown down, Mr. Uh, Mr. Keith, Toby Keith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. That one hurt. Yeah. That one hurt. <laughs> Especially since he's literally from Moore, Oklahoma. Right. Right. And I think he's got a house here in uh, Edmond as well. Yeah. Yep. And the he did, he did, but yeah, whenever I woke up, because I just, I saw in our little little family chat, woke up, saw that, and I was like, well, good freaking morning. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, it was a, uh, it was a Toby Keith day. <laughs> oh, lordy. <laughs> oh, he's good, don't even. Uh, no, 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 I, I like Toby Keith, I, I like Toby Keith. I like his restaurant, too. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> God, I haven't been there in too long. Other, other happening, I did watch part of the Grammys the other night. 
Um, oh, yeah? That was a wild thing for me because I haven't watched those for I don't know how long. But uh, I actually knew some of the names of the people that were taking the stage. That's awesome. That's, that's, wow. That's what kills me is I, I just never know anybody that's there anymore. And it's like, oh, all right. It looks like Tim King is here. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. I need to make sure I got stuff ready. I do. Hey, Tim, Hello. can you hear us? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How's it going, oh, yeah. man? I don't know. That app's all fucked up to go and figure out. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we can hear you. You, you. you sound good, look good. All right, good, good. <laughs> so we got Tim King with us from Soil. Um, just kind of want to introduce you to, to us a little bit. My name is Randy, and I'm in Oklahoma City. My Love Oklahoma Ashton. City. Great town. <laughs> yep, I'm Ash, and I'm also from Oklahoma City, so you got two of us. <laughs> Sweet. And I'm John. I'm in Topeka, Kansas, and you probably don't love that city. <laughs> eh, Kansas is all right. <laughs> I, do, I do love Oklahoma City. There's this place, I forget what the name of it was called, but it had the best fried chicken I ever had in my life. It was Ishens. in Okarchi, Oklahoma. I just, that's it. Yeah. yeah. You hear best chicken, I'm like, got it. <laughs> yep. They give you they give you the slice of the bread with the pickles and the fried okra and the chicken that they literally slaughter the same day and dip right in the deep fryer. Oh, oh that's yeah. the best stuff I ever had oh, in my life. It's See, we've been here for Mr. Randy's never gone. Yeah, we've been here for about twenty years and we've been saying, <laughs> you know, we really need to go check out Aishins. I can't <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I just cannot believe we've never been there. But it's so oh, you cool. haven't been there? No, I've never been there. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you gotta make you gotta make the road trip. I, I think it's only like maybe an hour away from Oklahoma yeah. City, if I'm not mistaken. But oh, it's well worth it. Well worth it. <laughs> Go on a Saturday, and they got uh, classic car shows right down the street. Nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about the tour you got. Um, you're going to be with, uh, oh my gosh, where did you, where did you go? Did you know that already? We were just talking about it. I know. Flaw and raw. <laughs> I like saying flaw and raw. <laughs> oh, God. It just of rolls. Course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, and, yeah, uh, back to the... 2000s so cool um i i'm i am really digging everything that's going on we we were able to talk to the union underground last week and uh they're excited uh great lineup man and and it looks like it's going to be a good time yeah it's going to be awesome it's uh it's the brainchild of me and brian scott from the union underground we've been trying to plan this for literally a couple of years now and uh finally come to fruition so we're real excited about it that is so cool that is that so is awesome. cool uh, you've you've also got a uh a, a cd or i don't even know what to call them anymore you know cd an ep a record whatever <laughs> play it forward um where where you've done a few covers and everything uh how what went into choosing all those those songs yeah during the pandemic you know everything was shut down and there was really no touring and uh, we got uh, offered to do two specialty pieces. One was recording uh, 11 cover songs, and the other was re-recording uh, all of our classics and hits and, and p most popular tracks. Uh -huh. So we decided to do that. You know, we didn't have anything else to do during the pandemic. Right. Thought it was a cool idea, and we literally, uh, between the four of us, fired off. Uh, songs that we all thought would be cool to cover and that we thought that soil could pull off and would sound good in our tuning and with the soil flavor on it mm -hmm. and if anybody had if any if there were any doubles triples unanimous votes those songs got picked then we kind of went on down the line and then we got to the argument stage of you know <laughs> rock paper scissors at the end of that <laughs> i uh, i think we right. i think for the most part for the most part we all agreed on pretty much everything there were uh there were a few in there that we tried. We actually tried uh, of Wolf and Man by Metallica. That turned out sounding like a piece of shit. We tried a Corrosion of Conformity song, and 
We learned real fast why, why Corrosion and Conformity is such an amazing band. Right. I mean, to figure out those riffs, they're just, it's like they're jamming and soloing during songs at the same time, and we're like, no, this is, this is too much for us. And so we, uh, we ended up actually swapping out the Corrosion and Conformity song with the Helmet song on song, which okay. turned out really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of funny, because the songs you think they're going to be a piece of cake were the ones that were the hardest to record. We did Thunder Kiss 65 by White Zombie. And we're like, oh, man, that's like one riff. That's It'd be so easy. Yeah, you would think, right. You know, yeah, and once you dissect the song, in every chorus there's a solo. There's whistles going off and bells and sound effects. and all. That song took us so long to make it into our own plus kind of give a nod to the original. We're just we're, like, oh, my gosh. We thought it was going to be the easiest thing. So, you know, big pat on the back to White Zombie for really throwing us for a loop on that one. <laughs> oh, wow. So what did the song Halo uh, what did that mean to the uh, trajectory to to soil? That was like the funny one thing of about the... that song. Yeah, the, the way that song came about is it was two songs that we merged together. Uh, long story short, is I had come to practice with the uh, the chorus of Halo, but it was set up, and okay. we were calling it the surf. We were calling it the surf riff because it was real staccato and kind of like one of those type things, but. Brian was singing the the verse to or the chorus to Halo over it, and uh, we had this other song called God of the Day, which had the uh, verse of Halo. Mm-hmm. So our two guitar players stayed after practice one day, and we're just kind of going through all the material we had up on the board. And our guitar player Adam's like, you know what? The chorus to this song Halo is really good. If we slowed it down and let Ryan kind of breathe a little bit on it, it'll be perfect. And then the verse to this other song, God of the Day, is awesome, but the rest of the song sucks, so why don't we combine the two? And it just kind of came like that, and we put it together, and, you know, it started to become a, an audience favorite when we play out. But yeah. we never really pictured it as some sort of smash hit. It wasn't until Johnny K., uh, the producer, got a hold of it and reworked it with us, and it just kind of took on a life of its own and just worked the audience and the fan base just started running with it. I mean, if you would have asked us X amount of years, 20-some years ago, if we ever thought that was a hit, we would have said no way. And here we are still riding off the success of Halo to some degree, you know? I love it. I, I love that I song. I, I can't believe that. That was two different songs. I love how honest you are. Yeah, that other song was just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, trial and error. That's the I best way. Love it. <laughs> we... We, we've been a band for 27 years this month, so it's just like we don't really give a flying fuck about anything anymore. It's like we, we've, we've, we've earned the right to say something's a piece of shit, you know? <laughs> right. It's like it's ours to call it that anyways. What are you going to do yeah, about it? Yeah, it's not fucking baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, good Lord. Thank God you didn't throw that one away, man. That That's... Uh, <laughs> That's definitely been great to you guys. I probably wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now if we would have thrown that one away. So, <laughs> good thing. Good thing. Hey, Ashton, can you play a little bit of that? That See, that's what I was going to say. Good job. As soon as I heard it, I'm like, all right, it's almost here. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, uh, all right. let's jam out for a little bit. <laughs> Oh yeah. Just a little teaser. Oh yeah. Just to get you excited. <laughs> We're probably still gonna get flagged on YouTube. <laughs> ah. You'll be all right. like twenty eight seconds that I played. <laughs> Will you vouch for us? 
<laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 call, I'll call up Sony and tell them it's cool. <laughs> right. it's, it's hilarious. Every time we get flagged and everything, um, you have to do a dispute. Well, it's usually on Facebook, uh, and you have to do a dispute. And I'm like, as you can see, we are talking to the band of that song as we're playing it. I think it's okay. <laughs> I mean, oh, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, I co-own a, a record label, Pavement Entertainment, and uh -huh. we're distributed through Sony. And you wouldn't believe the, the type of things that we have to go through with things getting flagged and all kinds of stuff. We're actually dealing with something right now with the band Art of Anarchy that we have on our label. That's, you know, Bumblefoot from Guns N' Roses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. Uh -huh. We just released a new video from them. And uh, Sony's... Sony and uh, YouTube and Vivo are flagging it all over the place because they say that there's uh, some violence in it because some guns and bombs are going off. So oh, for heaven's sake. Like everything, everything nowadays gets a flag. Who knows? Welcome to the Internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, would, you would think the Internet would be the Wild West. You could sit there and whip your dick out, but not, not anymore. Yeah, no, there's like, no, cancel, cancel, cancel. Come on. Yeah. I mean, you can whip your dick out, but... I, yeah. mine's, out, mine's out right now. I just, I don't have the camera on it. God right damn now. it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's where the line is. <laughs> oh, shit. So, Jim, I want to ask, since you guys have been a band for so long, and I was reading one of the things on your uh, page earlier about how you go out and tour for like a year at a time. How, how taxing is that on your guys' bodies at this point? Is there anything that you oh, do we don't, yourselves? It, yeah, we don't do that anymore. I mean, uh, you know, back in the day on the Scars record, we we toured for 13 months straight. With we we added it up the days off we had in between those 13 months, and it added up to two weeks. Like we took uh. off some time for Christmas, and we had a few days off in between. But we were just going nonstop, you know, tour after tour after tour. I mean, well, the album was a huge success and it was popping so we just said mm -hmm. yes to everything and uh, we were going to Europe and the UK and then we'd fly straight from there the bus would pick us up and we'd start a seven dust tour throughout the states and then go out with Static X and Ozzy and then Oz I mean it was an amazing amazing time but you know we were in our mid-twenties back then you know now we're all in our late forties and we just we just don't do that anymore that's why we all kind of have uh, other things that we do like I have my record label uh, our guitar player Adam has an office furniture installation company. Our uh, our drummer TJ, he's got a uh, a carpentry business and stuff. You know, we we all do things to where we still do soil, but just not that long haul type stuff where we're touring nine months out of the year. Instead, we pick and choose our battles. Like, you know, we'll go out for three weeks or a month, take a couple months off, do another tour. You know, we we did Australia last year, the U.S. a little bit last year. This year we're doing the U.S. We're gonna go back to Europe for three weeks and then go back to the U.K. for three weeks and then do a couple of fly-in gigs for festivals. But you know, that hitting it hard like we used to, it's just uh, it's just too much. I mean, if we were a band like Motley Crue or you know Ozzy or Nickelback or any of those bands that you know can have three, four tour buses and fly to gigs sold two quadrillion records and had the budget to do that. Right. You know, stay in the stay in the uh, Waldorf Astoria hotel. That, I mean, <laughs> then you can do you can tour for two years straight on some of the tours they do. But for a band that you know made it mid level and just kind of tipped the scales with a gold record and a silver record in the UK and stuff, we uh, you know we never made it to that huge echelon of comfort. So we still one tour bus, the crew and band all stuffed in there and breathing on top of each other. That that can only last so long in your forties, you know. Dude, that's brutal. True. <laughs> that is oh, brutal. It, it, it gets to the point where you hear somebody crunching on cereal and you're like ready to snap their neck. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna break your fucking hand if I hear that that snap of a potato chip one more fucking time, you know. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Yeah, it, it kind of like it. what you said. Uh, Brent Smith from Shinedown actually says that he is homeless. He has he has no home. He they just stay in hotels and uh, I, I guess his, he stays with his son every once in a while when he has a little bit of time off. But uh, that's that's huge. It's like huh, I hadn't even thought about getting a house. 
What the fuck? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, right. I mean, I, we've we've known those Shine Down guys forever. I mean, we we toured together uh, right when Simple Man was blowing up, and before oh, yeah. they like they made it, so we were right there in the rumbling, and we were neck and neck. You know, it was like Shine Down and Soil. We were neck and neck touring together, and then Simple Man came out, and it's just like they just. <laughs> Zoom, it's like, see you guys, all right, yeah. later, you know, <laughs> and, you know, great, greatest group of guys in the world, uh, probably my biggest mistake in my entire musical career was, I did have a chance to join Shinedown, uh, oh, during Sound of Madness, they had, uh, they had gotten rid of their bass player, and, uh, I talked to Brett, and he's like, if you want in, the gig's yours, we've known you forever, right, but you gotta quit, you gotta quit soil. And at the point, and at that time, a, a soil record, True Self, had just come out. We were halfway through the album cycle. I'm like, man, I'm like, should I join Shine Down? But you know, Soil's my band. I started it with the rest of the guys. Do I see it through? And I'm just like, listen, I'm like, I kind of got to see this through. If I could do both, you know, I'm in. But he's yeah. just like, no, I need you for all or nothing. And, I'm like now I'm kicking myself in the ass because you know it was <laughs> such a huge record and everything. But yeah, you know, who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have worked out. Maybe they would have. Maybe our personalities would have clashed in a band together. They would have kicked out, and I'd have nothing. So would you stop chopping on those chips? Kick you out now, Captain. <laughs> Tire smell and salt and vinegar all over the place, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Your ass is staying in New Mexico. <laughs> I'm not in a tour bus ever anyway. They smell terrible. <laughs> We're ever in a confined space. Right. <laughs> So we were kind of debating this. Um, we have another band on after you, and both of you guys are from Chicago. What do you call people from Chicago? Is it Chicagoites, or what, what do you call yourselves? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you call, we call ourselves maybe Chicagoans, or Chicagoans. Stupid, mother, stupid motherfuckers for living in such a cold environment. I, I don't know. You know. Uh, who, what's the band you're having on? Definitely, maybe. Definitely, maybe. Oh, is that what they're called? Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, it's like, like definitely, maybe. Like, who? Oh, oh. I'm like, I'm Finish like, your sentence. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, so they're not, so they're not showing up. They're, they're definitely a maybe for the show. Oh, I, dude, I did the oh. same thing. I'm, I'm like, do you have definitely maybe or, or what, what, what the fuck like, are you like, even finish. saying? <laughs> Uh, well, after that, the band On the Fence is going to call in, so... Oh, you know. On the Fence, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You know, that reminds me, when you said being a stupid ass living out in, in the cold in Chicago, I was doing, I was like, uh, two you weeks ago. There? Yeah. I think I lost you. Is you? Are you still there? I see you. Baby, come back. <laughs> Are you there? Can you hear us, Tim? Well, that's new. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's weird because we can hear him still. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. That is weird. Something broke. <laughs> I blame you. Well... <laughs> I'll throw a comment in the chat in case he can see that as well. Yeah, hopefully. <clears throat> well, that's it, man. I was going to ask him if he liked any Chicago sports teams. Yeah? No one dies. Oh, you bite your tongue. Dude, that is so <laughs> weird. <laughs> oh, that is really weird. At least he can respond and text at least, so we, we know kind of what's happening. No, <laughs> you have no idea. Randy? Yes. You want to respond to that? I like, didn't even see it. Oh. Sorry. What was it? Oh, he, he asked if he should Come read on. it again. Yeah, yeah. I 
I went to start typing, and then I was like, oh shit, I'm typing in the comments on the video. Don't want to do that. <laughs> Mike, I feel bad because we got about five minutes of time with him left on this screen. <laughs> My, my stepmom is watching, and she's talking trash on my Bears team, too. So. Uh-oh. Okay. I would, that. too. <laughs> How weird. Hey. That, I was like, that's a new one. <laughs> yeah, that was a new one for sure. That's censorship. They, they, they caught us swearing too much, and you two cut us off. <laughs> like, Lock, you had stop. your dick out. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah, I just got a message that I'm being fined two hundred dollars for swearing on your podcast. <laughs> we we get that money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we trap you. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't this isn't all live, is it? Is it pre-recorded? Uh, it is live on Facebook and oh, YouTube. Oh boy! <laughs> oh great! Hey everybody, how you doing? Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I, we've said plenty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is not a PG-13 broadcast <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, Jim, I was going to ask you before uh, we ran out of time tonight uh, if you are a fan <clears throat> of any Chicago sports teams as well since you're up in that area. Yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, it's like I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a sports guy. I, I never really have been. Uh so I'm the greatest guy to go to a, a game with or watch a game with because whatever team you love, I love, and I'm like, go, all right, yeah, knock them, <laughs> knock them down. Play. Yeah, it's me. Uh, yeah, it's a good play. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm just I'm just not a sports guy. I mean, my uh, my cousins both actually work for the Chicago Blackhawks. I and, love you know they, they they've got like four champ or three or four championship rings apiece. And I mean, it's a small retirement package just in the rings that they have. But wow. I just, you know, oh, yeah. that's just not, sports just kind of aren't my thing. So, sorry, the one question you asked me tonight, I gave you the dud answer. But <laughs> No, that's okay. I just, I just had to ask, and that's awesome that you're, the, the Blackhawks is my team, so I love that. Oh, sweet. Awesome. <laughs> so you still nailed it. My, mine too. Right. Mine too. There you go. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> they're, they're, they're killer. Go sports, everybody. Go sports. <laughs> You're my fucking spirit animal. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even drunk or anything. I'm not fire tonight. I haven't even had any in me yet. <laughs> I love it. I always oh. say my wife's more of a man than I am. I'm like, fuck, man, I don't know nothing about no sports. What the fuck? She starts why, screaming why do people the keep walking up to me? Remotes? Why do people keep asking me about fucking football and shit? Because <laughs> your wife, if your wife's a huge sport fan, they expect you to be like up here. <laughs> oh, right, heavens. Let's bring it back to music and... Uh, <clears throat> Ask him if he has anything else that he wants to throw out there that they have coming up in the future that we should know about, that the world should. Uh, definitely anybody who's into, uh, you know, two, early 2000s, you know, rock and metal and that, that era, that Ozfest era, come out and see, uh, you know, Union Underground Soil, Slaw and Ra, uh, back to 2000s package. We leave in three weeks in March. Uh, all of August, Soils going back to Europe to do some festivals and headline dates. And then we're doing a really special UK tour announcement here in the next couple of weeks for a uh, soil headline tour in the UK with some really cool support bands that are coming with us. Oh, so nice. uh, stay on the lookout for that. Awesome. And then we've got a couple little fly-in festivals at Orlando, Florida, Earth Day Birthday for WJRR and some other cool stuff. And, you know, thank you to everybody that supported us for all these years. Can't thank you enough. That's why we're still here and doing it. And we look forward to seeing some of you on the road. And for those of you who are, who are already complaining that we're not coming to uh, Oklahoma or uh, Florida <laughs> or Colorado or the East Coast or West Coast or anything, we are talking about a leg two of the back to the 2000s. So keep your pants on and uh, we will uh, figure out something. And if you're ever in Oklahoma City or in the Okarchi, uh Oklahoma area, try Aishin. Please. If you don't, you're going to regret it. I, I love it. You had to, It had to have made a really good impression on you because 
nobody knows how to say, who remembers Okarchi? I, <laughs> I mean, it Touché. must have really imprinted on you. <laughs> oh, I mean, literally, I still talk about that chicken, so... I mean, and for you to know, you're like Aishin. You knew it right away. It's yeah. Hilarious. It's so good. It doesn't matter either, you know what? If, if one of you didn't know that from being from Oklahoma City, it would have bothered me till probably next week. I'd have been looking it up, not being able to find it. You guys saved me many hours of staying, uh, staying awake Googling the crap out of where, where it is. So. Best Amazing chicken, chicken in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. But, yeah. So, um, you are getting... You guys are going to make it to Dallas, though, correct? I, I think I, I remembered seeing that. You're going to be at Trees in Dallas? Yeah, that okay. we are. That we Man, are. I'm going to try so hard to make that show. <laughs> yeah, if you got, if you want to you do a few shots and then really get, get into some madness, come on out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I love it. Well, I, well, thank you very, very much. Our... Uh, our next Chicago band is is here, definitely, maybe. Ne I don't know. They're, they're definitely, definitely maybe, maybe in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate your time, man. It was great. No problem, guys. Thanks for the interview, and uh, you guys stay safe out there. And thanks again. It was it was a lot of fun. Good, <laughs> some good laughs we got in on that one. I you love guys it. Take care now, all right? <laughs> Thank you, and hope we see you in Dallas. So, sounds great, man. If, if, if you uh, make it to the show, definitely make yourself known. We'll hang out. Oh, them. absolutely. Thank For you. For sure. Killer, guys. Thank you all. You guys Bye. take care now. Bye. Later, man. If I Whoa. make myself known, Randy, you'll just hold up a sign that says I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Can you hear us? Hi. Hi. Yes. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Absolutely. Oh, Sounds clear. great. Sounds great. So, just awesome. want to kind of introduce you to us. My name is Randy, and I'm in Oklahoma City. Amazing. I'm Ashton. I'm also in Oklahoma City. And I'm John in Topeka, Kansas. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, We're boy. coming to you live from Chicago. You got Courtney and Sawyer, and I think Ian, our guitar player, is in the lobby trying to join. I don't know if you have oh. to let him in. Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Maybe he met in a literal lobby somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there, like, looking, walking around like a Chick-fil-A, yeah. like, where? Where is everybody? Poor <laughs> 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 <Where are> Randy. <laughs> How funny. Yeah, yeah we, oh, we well. didn't realize it until we first got on that we, uh, both of the bands that we had tonight are both from Chicago. We just got off with uh, the band Soil. Okay. Oh, nice. I don't know them. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard Soil. of them. Yeah, yeah, go check them out. Uh, fix it to go on tour uh, with some really cool bands, Flaw and the Union Underground, and uh, oh, Ian's here. And hey, Raw. Found him. <laughs> Raw and Flaw. Ian, <laughs> Welcome to the party. The literal lobby of the church, not the <laughs> video lobby. No, it, it said I was in the lobby, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever found that lobby. I don't know where you it said were. four people were waiting, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I heard you for like two seconds, and then something glitched, I think. But so oh, weird. Sounds about right. That's just our luck. Well, welcome to the show, Ian. Thank Glad you. Glad you made it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and this is the whole band, isn't it? Three piece, right? Almost. Yeah, we have our much. Julian that will join sometimes, but you'll see the three of us on most of the photos. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Awesome. Gotcha, gotcha. So, all right. So, Ashton, what do you I've, got? Been, I've been super curious. First things first, where did the name come from? <laughs> I have to ask that. Guess. Yeah, do you have any guesses? <laughs> <laughs> All I know is it's been confusing a lot of us because whenever I was like, oh, yeah, I got definitely maybe, they were like, definitely maybe who? who? <laughs> we're like, you finished, finished you left the out the name. <laughs> definitely maybe who? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Or possibly somebody is what we get on. Right. Um, well, it's funny you ask. Most people assume it's one of two things, and it's neither. They either assume that it is the Oasis album that turned 30 this year. Definitely, okay. Which it is not. Um, I forgot about that. Yes. And 
the second thing they assume is it's the rom-com with Ryan Reynolds, which it also is not. We None of us have seen it. <laughs> and at this point, it's kind of on principle. We're not going to watch it until, I guess, someone makes us watch it. But um, right. named after a song that came out in 2003 by a band called FM Static. If you haven't heard of them, you may have heard of Thousand Foot Crutch, which is oh, the yes. side project. So that's their like pop punk side project band. Uh, okay. Absolutely love Thousand Foot Crutch. Oh yeah. <laughs> so not the direction <laughs> anyone thought. Yeah. No. <laughs> I love it though. <laughs> I actually got to interview Trevor at Rocklahoma one time. Highlight no of oh so awesome. That is sick. <laughs> We've yeah, been such a nice guy. He's such a nice guy. We're upset. Yeah. We, yeah, we've been talking with him lately, actually. Yeah. Wow. So, so much hit, talent. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. In the work. And also, someone sent us the link to apply for Rocklahoma. I haven't done it yet, so I don't know if we still can, but... Um... I bet I, I I don't know if it's too late or not. I know they haven't announced anything, so yeah. um, yeah. uh, <laughs> there is a uh, a Tulsa based uh, promoter that is he's got a stage out there and mm-hmm. uh, he is taking submissions. Nice. Do you have his contact? I wonder if that is it you. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Hey. My wife and Trevor. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so sick. Oh my God. Yeah. I see it better. Uh, yes, I can definitely slide you guys that that information for That'd them. Be epic. We would mm-hmm. love that. We've Sweet. had a few people on TikTok comment trying to get us out to yeah. Tulsa, and I know it's close. Yeah. To right there, so. yeah. I, you definitely see me pop my head in. <laughs> My wife like said they they're wrapping up the submissions on that uh, oh, Rock, gotcha. Oklahoma thing. So yeah, we're gonna okay, try to get it in there really quick. <laughs> we'll do. I can do it tonight. Yeah, I'll I'll get you that information tonight. Perfect. Cool. Ashton, I want you to go into that song about or that song, not that song. That question the song you're talking about. <laughs> Sing the shower. Oh oh yeah so. Whenever I was doing my little research, I saw, what is a 2000s emo shower singer? I saw that you were described as that, so I'm like, hang on a minute, hang on. <laughs> it's, it, the best way I can explain it is it's an elder emo whose music taste never grew out of the years 2003 and 2007, who has never been a singer in any capacity outside of the shower. <laughs> I love it. I go, I'm a shower singer. Yeah, yeah I saw it, and I literally put it in quotes because I'm like, I've, I've got to ask this, like, word for word, because that is insane. I love yeah, that. I think that used to be on Spotify bio. We have recently trimmed that bio down, so it makes a little more sense. <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. And then off of that, 2000s, you guys have probably heard it a million times. Y'all sound just like Paramore to start this off with. Who influenced you guys? Who are your guys' like main influences? I'd love for everyone to answer because all of our answers are extremely different. Um, oh, yeah. Me, I hope we all say yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be surprised. Uh, for me, it is definitely like Thousand Foot Crotch, FM Static. I grew up in a very conservative Christian household, so there was a lot of Flyleaf, a lot of um, Fireflight, bands like that. So kind of that Christian pop punk emo era it was huge for me and then in addition to that a ton of evanescence a ton of paramour i um, totally see all a lot of fallout boy yeah bands like that um it's definitely changed but that's kind of the root of my influences ian definitely has a very different answer than me yeah mine are kind of all over the place uh when we started playing uh music together before we were even a band but um we were playing in church and so i was learning how to be a church guitar player and like at that time and still now to this day my biggest influence has been john mayer okay um, and so i was trying to add a lot of that kind of stuff to yeah. what we were writing in the beginning but courts kept like grabbing my neck <laughs> with the, you know like that like, no over here over here and pulling me more right. towards uh towards Not punk, so, like, <laughs> yeah and i grew up with a lot of that same stuff but also like I mean, I've, I've listened to just about every era of music, um, and so 
I don't know, I still kind of find myself fighting the urge to, like, go classic rock. Like, that's, like, a <laughs> another thing. It's, like, if I'm, if I'm either too John Mayer or too classic rock. So, um, but, yeah, lately I've, I've just been listening to a lot of, the, like, the current scene for, for a lot of that stuff. But um, it all kind of blends together in my head in, in a fun way. You put some gain on it and don't add too many notes, and, and you can't really go wrong. Yeah, and then Sawyer Sawyer's a big pop girly. Yeah, well, I grew up listening to uh, Hog Nelson, which actually Trevor Trevor produced. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, I grew up listening to the radio, and so I, I have a lot of pop influences. Mainly like Justin Bieber, I listened a lot to growing up. Taylor Swift. Well, wow, Justin. Not yeah. so much Taylor, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So the song "One More Night." Um, I feel that song so much. The lyrics to that, just the first, first core or uh, verse of that thing. I'm just like, oh my gosh, how descriptive and how perfect. I absolutely love it. So, what went into writing that song? That song came together quite quickly. Um, I when we started writing it, it came from two separate ideas. So I had um, the pre-chorus, the I'm just here to kill the vibe part. That was just in my head. I had just mm -hmm. sort of come up with it um, at some point and it kind of lingered there for a bit, which is usually the sign of, of a good one if you don't forget it yeah. right away. And then I had recorded a voice memo in the car on my way to work one morning. Um, and it was the, the line, I don't want to live, but I don't want to die. It had a little bit different of a melody, um, but I remember us starting with the pre-chorus. So I just sang it a cappella. We like aligned on a tempo. I sang it out loud for the boys and then um, pulled up Logic, got the tempo going. I sang it a cappella and then Ian, sorry. Not Logic. Able to wait. What do we use? <laughs> Whatever. It's okay. Um, we recorded the pre-chorus. It was just me, and then Sawyer and Ian filled it in from there. And then I, from there, it was like just so clear. I think for all of us, it was super clear in my head. So I kind of had the structure mapped out, and it was writing itself. And so I just said, okay, then the next part's going to be like really big, and it's going to have this line. Um, and so then they would put their instruments on. I laid the chorus down, and then we usually, usually. We'll do the verses last and kind of build the biggest parts first and go backwards. Um, but this one started with the pre-chorus, which also seems to happen a lot. So two separate ideas um, and definitely some very real and raw feelings yeah. um, coming out of, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. I lost my sister in 2020 to suicide. Um, I started therapy, was diagnosed with depression and anxiety, finally got medicated and just kind of trying to figure my shit out, excuse my language, and <laughs> that's just how it felt. And so I always, um, I sometimes get frustrated that my lyrics can be so literal because so many of the groups I listened to growing up, it was so metaphorical and beautiful and poetic. No. And I almost get frustrated that I'm too literal. Um, no, but I, I think it's perfect. <laughs> when, I, when I read that, I was just like, that that explains everything i mean it's it's oh yeah it's, i hate my friends but i miss them yeah you know it's like <laughs> that's me man it's like <laughs> yeah john's like that's why like, don't you ever like text the but line. i miss the shit out of him but i i just never text you know <laughs> that's probably the one sense. line that we've gotten the most specific comments on it and everyone's like commenting like yeah everything but the friends part i love my friends <laughs> like, you never find it all perfect. There's so many, there's so many comments like that on every song. Or they'll say like, right. "What's sleeping?" Because they don't sleep too much. But. Yeah. I think uh, Ashton's probably got that queued up and ready to give us a little sample of that song as well. Ooh. <laughs> it is cool because just I was scrolling through TikTok one day, y'all popped up. Which I don't know if you guys run your own TikTok, but that was me that was like, "Hang on." Let me talk to you guys. So I'm going to show everyone what I was Hell introduced yeah. to. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I just got to find I sleep too much. I don't have the time, but I don't do enough. I hate all my friends, but I miss them so much. I'm really fucking smart, but I'm out of touch. It's not the same to kill the vibe. Talking as you shit inside my head Maybe I won't try to hide 
That is so good, so good. It, Ashton, Ashton there was like, uh, uh, I, I go, man, I really dig this, Ashton. He goes, you like it? I, I freaking love it. He's like, y'all are like, old, I like, so I didn't I expect didn't, that. I didn't know you. <laughs> there we go. No, I, I dig it. I mean, I'm not a one-trick pony. <laughs> and it, it's crazy because that, what was y'all's reaction whenever you first started to realize that that was like blowing up I don't, I don't even know if we had time to react <laughs> it was kind of it just well, happened <laughs> it was very unexpected yeah you go ahead yeah we, what was kind of crazy about it was like we had never i mean we've seen a lot more views since the first time that it blew up the first time it blew up it was like when it hit like a hundred thousand views we were like holy shit oh wow and and like we were um, literally we were getting ready to record it. The first video that blew up and people were commenting on was the demo that we did. Like it wasn't the the finished song, and it, the song hadn't been finished yet. And so people are like, "When is oh, it coming wow. out?" We're like, "Oh, uh, 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 hold it's on, it's out to us uh, yet." <laughs> right. And uh, and then we were uh, we were in L. A. Working on recording it when it hit like a second wave. There was another oh, that wave was the of first like. One. Well, and it, 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 it had, like, continued to rise. It, like, passed 100,000 was getting more, like, 500,000, like, while oh. we were working on it. No. It was, was no. It? Oh, <laughs> I didn't want to correct you, but that's not right. So the, we had seen, like, mild success um, from posting it because we had it written um, in the spring, and then we actually played it a few times live. We played it at Summerfest in July. That's when the original TikTok was recorded, and then – we wouldn't end up working on it until October of last year in LA. And so we had been posting our three to eight TikToks a day, every day for months and months. And <laughs> the most we'd gotten, like if we got over 200, it was a good day. And by far, One More Night was the best performing song. TikTok seemed to love it. It was like the one that would get comments and shares. Um, and then when we went to LA in October, I posted from the studio and then I put my phone down and I picked it up and that would be the first one to get to 100k so that was the first one that mm, cried I was like right. hey guys I was like I think I think this one might hit 10,000 and like it just kept going and we were oh my gosh. And refreshing and in the morning and it was crazy and um, we kept posting and I had heard a rumor that once you get one it's easier to get the next um, so then the weekend of Thanksgiving is when I posted the one that would end up getting 3 million views. It just hit 3 million like last week. I'm wearing the sweatshirt in it. Um, oh. But it took another month, you know, to get another one that would pop. And then um, the one that you just showed, I was shocked to see that one. I kind of forget about that one because that was like so late in the game. And I felt like people were so sick of hearing the song and we had gotten, you know, a handful of comments that were saying, why do you keep posting the same thing? Don't you have other music? And no. so I think the, the caption on that video is like, if you're seeing this on your For You page again, it's because we're not stopping until everyone that needs to hear it hears it. And lo and behold, that one took off. Um, and it also had another one in tandem that took off with it. Um, so they both hit half a million at the same time, which was pretty crazy. And that... That was a wild time. I think I had my phone out 24-7, just like with numbers pulled up. Spotify backend was pulled up, refreshing TikTok, um, <laughs> trying to keep up with responding to comments. And um, we were all surprised because we did two songs in LA and we all kind of, well, I don't want to speak for everyone, but even the producer and I, we were more excited about the other song. And so we just kind of wanted to get one more night out, but then it, you know, kind of went crazy on TikTok. So we, um, had to get it out sooner than we anticipated um, and it teed up the next one really nicely but it was just so so utterly unexpected because like I said I thought it was so specific and so literal and, and I wasn't sure um, if anyone would really relate um, maybe I'd get a couple of people but it was just it's still absolutely wild to know that you know five million plus people have heard that song 
Yeah. Yeah, one of the weird things about that, too, is, like, um, I don't think that we had really sat with a song for that long before actually having it produced and even, like, playing it live. Like, when the, the first several songs that we made, like, just had to go in our live set immediately because... You know, that's all we had, and like right. um, we had had that full song written, and we were playing it at a, you know a couple of shows over the summer. So, but yeah, like Court said, like by the time that we got around to actually finishing it, like we had sat with that song for a long time. So it was weird that that one was the one that like all of a sudden took off. Like, are yeah. we having fun yet? Um, we wrote like basically the night before we left for LA. Like it, it literally was like squeezed in at the last second. We didn't even know if the producer was gonna pick that one to work on once we got there. Like it just like it was beyond fresh. Like as fresh as fresh could get besides some of the new new stuff which we wrote on the spot. Like it was it that was interesting for me for sure. Like, yeah, I mean we've been posting it since May on TikTok and it would take until oh, wow. October to finally get some traction. It's so weird how things happen, and, and most of the time it's just organic, and, some, and, and it, you're not expecting it. That yep. and that's true to form right there. It's just like, what just happened? You can try your butt off for a year, just posting, like you said, your three every day, and yep. nothing, 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 and then out of nowhere, it, it's just. Yeah, it, it's weird how things work. But. It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have uh, tour slash upcoming shows that we need to hear about too as well? Like, let's get that information out there to the world. <clears throat> yeah, so coming up, um, we're playing in Detroit for the first time next Friday, February 16th. And then we're playing in Chicago on Saturday, February 17th for a festival um, called Snooze Fest where everyone wears their pajamas and it's all for charity for the Hope For Us Network, which is mental health awareness and resources, which is super cool, obviously, a cause that is near and dear to us. Um, So we're pumped. And then we are trying our hardest to get on a tour um, in the spring, late spring, maybe, of Cross Your Fingers and Toes for us. That would be something we could announce soonish. other than that, some one-offs. We're trying to get back to Summerfest. We'd love to play Rocklahoma. Um, and our goal is just to kind of get out of Chicago more than we have. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the main two are Detroit and Chicago this next weekend. Detroit Rock City. Awesome. Like uh, Never been, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh got to throw God in Lord. a kiss reference in every show. <laughs> so there it was. It's it's it was too brutal, so he had to slide one in. <laughs> it's it's appreciated. <laughs> I'm excited for this Detroit show because I grew up in Michigan, so uh, some oh, of my cool. family that like some of my extended family might actually be able to see us for the first time. So that that's really exciting. Right on. Right yeah. on. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, so speaking of, how would your family members describe definitely maybe to people that have never heard the band? How would they how would they describe you? Sawyer's mom would say, so me and Sawyer are married, his mom would be my mother-in-law. She would say uh-huh. there's a lot of cursing and swearing. Oh, no. I didn't <laughs> see that <laughs> at all. That's yeah, not a lot. I've heard worse. I know. So now we do clean versions of all of our songs, and I send those to her only. And she's like, it sounds just as lovely. Um, my dad heard our first song. I played it for him. And about two and a half minutes in, he said, this is, this is cool. He was like, who, who is this? Who's singing? Oh, like, it's me. oh no. My family's just um, kind of along for the ride. I think he would definitely say something to the effect of, you know, it's like Avril Lavigne, but for mental health, if they had to boil it down. But um, Ian's parents, I feel like, are big stands. So I don't know what they've said to you, Ian. Yeah, my parents have been, like, super, super supportive of it. Um, I've been making music my whole life, and uh, I think that, like, in a really good way, um, what we're doing with Definitely Maybe has surprised them. Um, like, they've always been very proud of me, and I, like, I was a trumpet player for a long time and did all sorts of different things. I played tons of different instruments here and there, and not that I'm, a, like, you know, proficient at every one of them, but, you know, they've seen a lot from me, and, and this this project, like, definitely, maybe, like, my mom is, like, kind of over the moon about it, um, she, uh, yeah, I think they're surprised by, like, the depth of the lyrics, 
um, but also just like, you know, like one of the reactions is like, this sounds like a real song, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like you know, You're a uh, big I tried. Boy. Yeah, like we're a musical family, you know, and like I, I especially trust my dad's ear with things. Okay. Um, um, you know, my mom grew up doing like choir and um, theater and, you know, performed in musicals and all that kind of stuff. My dad can sing, but he, he didn't really, I mean, grow up kind of doing that, but he's got a really great ear, and I think that I kind of got some of that from him, and so like... You know, he tends to have a little bit more notes about like, oh, I, I'm having a hard time hearing this, or I really like that drum groove, or whatever. And like, you know, it's it's kind of fun because I get that's really a lot cool. of enthusiasm and like investment from them, which is great. Um, you know, I know that kind of a lot of people's parents are like, oh, that's nice, and that's kind of where the <laughs> conversation ends. Um, <laughs> that's okay. But still, what do you, you know, but, about it? <laughs> Uh, no, Have you thought things. about applying for a real job yet, son? <laughs> <laughs> Have real jobs, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad, it's heavy. <laughs> say that again, sorry. What'd you say? You're just being funny and getting a Twisted Sister reference, that's all. Hey. <laughs> I uh, do have another oh, important Lord. question. Uh, the one stop shop for anybody to find you guys. Uh, where, where are you guys? Social media wise, what's the best way to find you? Because it's not Great easy. Question. Right? Yeah, definitely is a hard word to spell. So <laughs> accommodate for the difficulties and challenges when faced with looking us up. I made a link tree. So it's link tree slash DM band, which is by far the easiest that will get oh, you yes. to everything. Um, it will link you to our TikTok, our streaming links, our music videos, any upcoming shows. Um, and then we also have a website, definitely made band where we'll update with shows, merch, um, things like that. And then obviously you can find us on TikTok and Instagram, definitely maybe band. Post on TikTok a lot. Uh, that's where you'll hear a lot of music, a lot of new music, um, a lot of fun videos of us. Um, and then Instagram is where you'll find like shows and merch drops and things of that nature for the most part. But um, yeah, Linktree slash DM band, or if you can find your way to any of our socials it's the same link in all the bios and it will get you to every piece of information you need to know beautiful link tree is so awesome it's the best <laughs> a beautiful oh, yeah. thing it's great <laughs> i love it and for anybody hey. looking for that it is in the comments now on the from the live feed so there's a link right there for you hey sweet Easy enough that's <laughs> nice well, thank you guys so very, very much, and uh, I'm excited to see where the rest of this year takes you, man, because it sounds like you guys are, are heading the right direction, and uh, the stars are finally aligning, so really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. We sure hope thank so. You. New song, yeah. Mars Pierce, and an EP in April, so there will be new music ASAP. Good That's stuff. Awesome yeah, to hear. Stay tuned. And uh, for anyone who can make it out to a show, we're already playing some of those new songs live. So uh, right now, it's definitely the best place to get like a good sneak peek. And I know we're also posting some TikToks about the new song coming out March first. But there's another one still that we're playing live that we I don't think we've really posted yet. So come on All out right. and get a sneak peek. Little teasers. Cool. <laughs> cool. So where where would be a good place to send you that contact information? Just a, to an me. email? Yes. Okay. Um, or you can fill out the contact page on the band okay. website, too. It's it's all me. Or you can send a DM on any of the socials. It's That's me, too. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make, make sure it hits you in, in the, not his mom or something. <laughs> <laughs> and <you> block. <laughs> um, this creepy old bald guy. <laughs> Sending links? I don't think so. Right. <laughs> Whatever you find first and is easiest, it will be me, and I will respond. I'll be, I'll be looking out for it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. And, and like I said, I, I, I can't wait to see what this year has in store for you. Very proud of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank hey, you for having you to jump off that, I want to let you guys know we're always here for you. We'll be here if you want to come back on. We're available. I think you've been mm -hmm. talking to Ashton, so get in touch with them. Yeah, you guys should have my personal number. I at least sent that in the email, so 
Okay, great. I'll text check. I'll call anything. And the, the same link that I sent you guys, always bring you in here. We'll great. see you guys pop up and be like, oh, hey, let's uh, pop you in. <laughs> you can be in the physical lobby and the digital lobby. I'm yeah. never leaving digital the lobby, lobby again. please. <laughs> <laughs> I love I'll just it. be hanging out constantly. He's like, <laughs> right. he's there every day. He'll talk for a long time. Yeah. We're here. He's for got it, a though. futon over there now. <laughs> he's moving in. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you guys so much. And uh, please. The next keep time us... I'm on here, I'll be in the background of one of y'all's shots. We're just going to be hanging out like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> but yes, definitely anything that you guys have and you want us to promote, that's what we're here for. That's what we love to do. Uh, we want to see you succeed. That's. That's how we succeed. So uh, yeah, back at thank you. you. Doing what you do is so important. Roll through our city. We're here for you. Yeah. Just let us know. Heck yeah, Rocklahoma. Hopefully. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. We also have a uh, a photographer amongst our ranks as well. So if y'all manage to sneak down here, yes, we've got a very go. very talented photographer, which awesome. you can look at bleach bangs and see. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> She's actually a photographer for the Rocklahoma book, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> does great work. Um, Maria Bird. Oh. I want to be in a book. Come. <laughs> so, yeah. Get that application in. That's step one. Yes. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I'm on it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's really not that bad. We will see you guys at Rocklahoma. <laughs> yeah. 2024. Let's, let's manifest it. Let's go. That's right. Let's do it. I'm exactly. Do it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank see you guys, guys later. Have Thank a good you. one. We bang your ugly friends too.